Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this station's mask. podcasters joe's a part of it we got to do more with it but you know something hey it's those first steps building up is the biggest thing you know it is it is but everybody that's on it so far is very supportive for the most part of one another and like we even want to do um and it's funny to have you on for this like indie movies we want to be able to have them on our channel as well not saying we own like everybody that's a part of the network owns their own stuff we're not one of those type of things where it's like okay well you're on this you have to give us five percent of whatever no it's just to help each other grow basically i love that and you know just kind of go from there see what happens with it if say if there's a bigger network that's gonna be like hey we want you to come with us no hard feelings if they're, especially if they're gonna pay you go get that bag <laughs> just make sure you give up on it hundred percent, a hundred percent. I get that. Yeah, it's it's kind of the same for us here in Bakersfield because I mean, we're close enough to everything that's big, but we're still far enough away where we can do our own thing and no one's gonna, no one gripes about it. You know, we can still have that kind of creative freedom. Exactly. Um, but it's it's definitely close to resources. Like if yeah, like you're not too far from New York, we're not too far from LA or even Las Vegas or mm-hmm. or the Bay Area. So there's plenty of other things to be done or other people to work with. But nonetheless, I like to work with locals here in town or as close as possible and people who are just willing to, to put in that creative work and yeah. not so much for the, for the money, but I totally get that too. Like you got, you got to make some money while you're doing it. But at the same time, really work about the creating, you know, making new stuff, making stuff people like, or hopefully like, you know, cause sometimes it's kind of a, kind of a gamble what you're going to do. Yeah, true. But I mean, at the very least, uh, Michael, Bobby, what's up? At the very least, it's just to again help each other grow, especially with the indie scene. Like as as me with as for you know, I can speak for myself as a podcaster and you with being an indie director. It's fun as hell, but it's tough when you still have to take care of your household, like work your nine to five, whatever the case may be, to take care of the bills. And these are passion projects that you would want to be like, throw me into this field and let me do this, let this be my nine to five or whatever you want to call it, or fucking nine in the morning till nine in the morning the next day type of thing because that's how much passion you have for it and i'm not saying i would want it to be like this what's up eric i would i would be happy like what i make for my day job if i if i had the opportunity to move over and do this full time and i made the same thing same benefits and everything peace i'm gone oh 100 like, percent, yeah peace. hell yeah I mean, of course, you'd want to make a lot more than that, but if I have to build up from that, but I'm making at least that to where I can take care of what I have to take care of, my responsibilities and all that, fuck yeah. Let's 100%. Go. Right yeah, now. absolutely. Now, how uh, this is... Oh, go ahead. This is definitely my... Uh, uh, not my, I wouldn't say nine to five. It's more about five to midnight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do this as often as I can, and then I sprinkle in regular work whenever I can, you know? Yeah. Uh, fortunately, you know, from a, from a very young age, I've been working since I was 10, so we've been we've been doing construction cleanup, and I know that kind of stuff. So there's always something to fall back on. Like, gotta make a little extra money here, make sure everything's taken care of. Mm-hmm. You know, I I don't believe in that starving artist stuff. You have to you gotta eat, and you can look at me right now. I like to eat. All right, you look at me. Ain't nothing wrong. With uh, that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, if, if it was possible to just focus on this 100, percent there would be no other option for me. Even yeah, even if it's break even, or even if I gotta work a little bit or um live up a little bit less, you know, with a little yeah. bit less money. I'm fine with that. As long as I get to keep creating, I'm happy to do so. Same here, man. And I mean, if we had that opportunity, what now? I'm not even going to say if we have it. If we, when we get that, you're going to see our work being that much more improved. Even if it's just me with my podcasting, you're going to see a lot more improvement with certain things here and there because you have that time to tinker with more things. You know what I mean? You have that time. But, mm-hmm. For example, like I, I just use the nine to five because that's just the regular quote-unquote work schedule so 40 hours a week let's say you can put 40 hours a week into this that alone will be just 
so much better for your creation. For whatever your creation passion project is, you're making that money off of that or with that. That's a lot. And then overtime, because we love overtime and it's overtime for a passion project. Well, shit. <laughs> Yeah, it's all that investing. It's investing in yourself, really. If that's what you want, go for it. I don't care if you're talking, you know, filmmaking or, or what we're doing right now. Or if you like making figurines out of golf balls that you find on the side of the road, and that's what you really want to do, do it. We got the internet now. We have a market for everything out there. There will be an audience for you to build something. It's it's the time. And my goal this year is to put more of that time in to dedicate everything I've got, every extra minute. You know, I, I did the numbers. If you do 275 minutes, about four hours, uh, 35 minutes a day, you're at 100,000 minutes for that year. That's and that's, that might, that's a lot. That's a lot. But you do it just a little bit every day, you know, three and a half or four and a half hours a day. That's about 12 to 15 percent of your day. And that's, yeah. So just put it all together and you'll get wherever you want to go. And that's the goal. That's the progress right now. Just incremental steps. Which is awesome. And I do like how... Um I was listening to any last words. I was talking to any last words last night. And one thing that I love, well, a lot of things, but the reason I like what you were saying about with the holiday horror comedies, you want to do one for every single ho- for you know every single holiday or every single month or whatever. I think that's an awesome idea. And a fun idea too, because when I think of a horror co- when I think of a horror movie, or sorry, a horror holiday movie, I think of more of don't get me wrong, I like the serious ones like Black Christmas and all that, which there's some yeah. people in that. But when I watch a holiday horror movie thanks killing is my favorite one i love this yes stuff. off the wall crazy cheesy shit just because every other horror movie that i enjoy well most of them i enjoy like every other type of horror movie it's more serious based and that's what you're expecting but for a holiday one i'm like i'm expecting something silly because i think of it like i think of when i get together with my family right well before this whole covid bullshit when you get together with your family what are you doing you're drinking you're smoking you're eating you're having a great time on these holidays you're laughing you're just having a blast you're not being very serious you're not having like that serious tone and i feel like that's how holiday holiday horror movies should be i'm not saying every single one of them but i feel like they should be like that because it's just you want that just goofiness that laughing and just whatever ridiculousness and i'm happy that you're doing that oh i i 100 agree with that that's that's exactly what i wanted because of the family aspect you know like okay maybe these movies aren't made to watch with my younger siblings because i'm not going to watch it with a 10 year old no but it's something that's you know it's it's raunchy, it's ridiculous, it's fun. And that's, you know, it's the holidays. You want to have fun on those. And if you're a horror fan, you want a little bit of horror in every holiday. And I, I get that. That's what I want to provide. Hell yeah. Now with um, my violent Valentine, how did you come up with that idea? Honestly, um, because we, we talked about Christmas Party Massacre was the first one I did um, that was on a whim kind of thing where I was like, I wanted to shoot a horror movie for Christmas a while back and then it kind of skyrocketed into a bigger thing. And then as we were filming, like, well, we're going to have to redo this like from top to bottom because we didn't get everything we wanted in. And I was like, well, then put that on the back burner for right now. I mean, it's no longer Christmas time. So we're going to, we're going to reshoot and redo that. Mm-hmm. But the idea for the, the, the series, the 12 of them um, needs to get going in order to make that, you know, that Christmas one a reality. So I was spitballing. I wrote down about, I would say 30 ideas for Valentine's day alone. And I was like, well, what could I do here? So I turned to my, uh, my assistant director here, Joe, and uh, I gave her all the ideas. And I was like, which one of these do you like the most? And I bounced them off of her a lot. And she's like, this is, this is, I think is the winner right here. We've got to have okay. uh, a call girl, a hooker having uh, dates on Valentine's day. And everyone just gets murdered. People want murder. They want raunchiness. And they just want to uh, make fun of the holiday. And I think that's, that's a fun thing to do. So whenever, yeah, whenever I have a crazy idea like that, that even I think was, I don't know if anyone's going to watch this. I ask her first and then take it from there. That's a good source. Cause she's a little crazy too. <laughs> oh, she's the great, she's the great kind of crazy. I love it. Yeah. No, she's, she's awesome. Like I know her through podcasting and all that. And it's just great, great, great. Person. And, um, yeah, man, I'm excited for it, though. Like, I really want to see this project happen. I really do, because, again, the holiday horror stuff, you can never get enough of them. And it's just, I like how you chose Valentine's Day and, I, again, how you want to do all of them. And it's one of those things to where I'm the type of person, there's a holiday coming up or even the month of the holiday. I'm like, I want to watch some holiday horror movies this month. Yeah. Let's, you know, let's get some, let's get some more out there. 
That's me too, right there, brother. Yeah. You have I I feel like it's a necessity. I really do. I feel like it's a necessity at this point. We need a we need like a even if there's not a holiday every single month because I'm not 100 percent sure. We need like a monthly horror movie that just every month, every year, going around watching this movie for whatever reason. You know, it's January we're watching this. It's February we're watching this. Well, oh hell yeah! This. But yeah, of I'm, course, yeah. No, Have you checked out that website? Um, dang, I cannot. The name escapes me. But there's like these ridiculous holidays. Like maybe it's not national, but like they they found holidays for every day of the year. And it's like, oh, this is a local one to this area. Or uh, Charlie on, on the show is tuning in with uh, um, March 14th is uh, National Steak and, and uh, Blowjob Day. And I was like, that's not a real thing, bro. And then there's an article about it. It's just there's so much ridiculousness out there. Uh, listen, before we get too far from that, I'm just saying that's not a bad holiday. <laughs> Great holiday, yeah. <laughs> I mean, right, for those who celebrate Valentine's Day, that's like her holiday, and then you have the guy's holiday right after. It's just a can, month away. You can even skip the steak. <laughs> I don't need both. I'm not. I'm not greedy. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, but it's it's yeah, it's crazy how many like those little holidays too. I kind of want to plug one or two of those in that maybe not everybody knows about. But you know what? Someone's going to enjoy this. And as long as they, they enjoy their, you know, hour and a half, two hours worth of watching, we've done our job. Oh. Uh, I'm not looking to tell, like, some kind of crazy story or some, some kind of uh, message and everything. I just want to make sure people are entertained for their time mm -hmm. and that they get something out of it. You know, even if it's a, a funny story they want to tell their friends, like, like Thanks Killing, because that's my favorite one, too. Uh, and I could tell people that all the time. And that gives me something to, to talk about, especially around Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. There's no Thanksgiving movies out there that I like. It's like. Hallmark, I guess, if they got like 30 of them, I bet you, but I'm not going to watch those. I want to watch something horror. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, oh my God. Thanks killing, man. That's, that's one movie I bring up very, very, very often. I told Joe to watch it. Um, my wife actually watched like two minutes of that movie with me and left the room. She was like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Talk about the movie. Not, not me, not me people. Don't worry about that. But, um, yeah, she, it's, it's one of those movies where you turn your brain off. If you're someone who drinks, I say have a drink. If you're someone who smokes, I say smoke. Which I've always watched this movie sober and enjoyed it. So I guess I gotta try it high next time. And I watch How did it. I, call? I don't know why. I watch the movie about three or four times a year, every year. It doesn't even have to be Thanksgiving. It'll be like Thanksgiving, and then I watch it when I, just because it, I'm just like I. I want to laugh. Let me throw this nonsense on. <laughs> I put that uh, yeah, I put that a hundred percent. Me too. I've, I've at least like. Yeah, I guess like three times a year, and only one of them's in Thanksgiving time or in November. So, gee, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I can't believe. I, yeah, I watch that one on repeat sometimes. I'll let it run for as many times as I can. I don't care if anyone else is bored. I'm gonna watch that. You guys, exactly. you guys can wait till the next movie. <laughs> uh, Kyle said I suckered him into watching that movie. You're welcome, Kyle. Yeah, you are. Welcome, yeah. That's my American gift to you is thanks killing. You're welcome. Tradition, it's a tradition that we do here in America. We watch everybody gets down with their family when you're done eating and you sit around and you watch things killing. It's a beautiful tradition. The kids go to bed or outside. We don't know where the kids are. We don't care. We just watch things kill. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a better tradition than Black Friday for sure. So if everyone get, got away from, from the lines, just go watch a movie instead. It's going to be a better place. The world's a better place right there. Hell yeah. James, what's up? And I mean, that is like I want another horror holiday comedy to have that effect on me to where I'm like, you have to run out and see this freaking movie or you have to rent it or buy it, whatever the case may be. However you can get it, you got to get it and you got to see it. There is a bunch of holiday horror movies. I just can't think of them off the top of my head. But there's not like like that one holiday horror comedy movie that I'm drawn to like Thanksgiving. I tried with there's another one called which I think is supposed to be like Thanksgiving ish. Oh, what the hell is it called? Whatever it was, it was fucking terrible. Too much singing and sing. Oh God! It was something about oh, what the hell was it called? It, it's gonna slip my mind. But I watched it because it was like I think it was something to do with chickens or whatever, whatever the case may be. Poultry Geist. Thank you. Yes, Poultry Geist. I, was... I forced myself to finish it. <laughs> I was like, I was about to turn it off. I was like, I gotta, I have to finish this. I have to just complete this movie. 
it was it was a one and done for me man yeah i watched it one time i was like that's a lot of singing i wasn't expecting that at all no and then i'm like this is yeah i don't need to watch this again i did it once whoever likes it i'm not gonna judge you because i'm gonna it was funny <laughs> that movie wasn't worth my time like i understand if you walk out of that movie if you walk out of thanks killing i don't know what to say because my wife did so i'm not gonna say anything crazy but i'll just say this it's one of those movies here's here's how i can explain thanks killing here's how i can explain a lot of um horror comedies turn your brain off don't expect anything. Expect the movie for what it is. Don't expect it to be a masterpiece because it's not going to be. And then you'll enjoy it. Like you have to have zero expectations for those type of movies. And then you'll fall in love with those movies. And that's basically that's basically it. Like I again, I I really don't know what else to say about that movie. You would think that they're paying me, and they're not. They should though. I at least come on my show. So if anybody knows these people that who made this movie, send them my way, please. I have been trying to reach out to some of them. Um, I went over on IMDb and just looked up everybody, trying to see who's still doing what. So I send a few feelers out there, just some emails, mm -hmm. just it's anything. I'll work on you guys with anything you want to do. I don't care. So if I get a hold of them, if it finally happens, I'm going to send them your way because they uh, got to get the word out more about things killing. We do. And when Bloody Valentine comes out, or sorry, not Bloody Valentine, my violent Valentine comes out, we are going to get the word out about that too, because that's going to be great. I know this. I appreciate it. Because just from watching your show, um, I do not ignore messages, Joe. I said, what's up to James? And we mentioned you a couple times. <laughs> she is she complaining in the comments right now that sounds like joe oh my goodness i can't pull up the comments because i'm doing it through restream and zoom i'm not doing it just through restream so i can't pull up the comments on the screen but i do not ignore them she's what's that fake? you can ignore her it's fine that's just joe you know, move her to the side <laughs> just push it over there over there <sighs> and, and and on a on a note real quick I'm, I'm just kidding joe please don't get mad at me i still need your help <laughs> to film all this so uh, I'm gonna make her work a lot. That's the problem. So I can't get her too mad at me. Yeah, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't hurt him, or try to get him deported because he's legal. Just because he's Mexican doesn't mean he's illegal. People. That is true. Just because half the family can be doesn't mean this guy can. All right. <laughs> um, I am what is certified indoor Mexican. It's like on my driver's license. I am. I'm here to stay. Yeah, Trump. Any of them? They can't kick me out. They've tried. They've tried many times. They want to. They're thinking about it real hard. There's too many Miguel Rodriguez's out there. Like we got to cut the numbers from like a million down to at least 800,000. And I'm <laughs> definitely part of that top percent they want to get rid of. So it's all right. I understand. We won't let it happen, man. As they say to us, you're one of the good ones. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many times I've actually heard that Bakersfield. <laughs> Me too. Man. All my life. I, I, I don't understand that. Like, is that the first thing you think? Like, Hi, my name's so and so. Blah blah blah. They see how you. Oh, you're one of the good ones. Do you mean people, what? or do you mean black? Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean? I got. We gotta start taking that back. Like, oh, yeah, you're one of the good ones, Joe. You're one of the good ones, James. You're Joe. one of the good ones, Kyle, Eric. Oh. Know, there's a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of good ones out there. <laughs> so yeah, man. Um, what's the uh, like? What can you discuss about this movie? The, your idea without giving away too much. Oh, for sure. Yeah, let me go into it a little bit. So my, my Violent Valentine is, is a Valentine's Day movie about uh, Melissa, who is a call girl who's trying to build up uh, her money, trying to get out of her life. So she sets up a bunch of dates for that day. She gets a nice hotel and everything goes wrong, goes very, very wrong for everybody out there, uh, except for her, because she actually makes it through. I will say that. Don't worry. But uh, not a lot of people around her do, though. That's the, that's the real issue right there. Mm. It's uh, it gets very violent and it's uh, a lot of fun, a lot of raunchiness, a lot of that 80 slasher kind of feel, but with more comedy to it and then taking itself seriously. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be more funny, more dark humor. Um, the horror part really comes from everybody dying around her. And as Joe pointed out, maybe we could just make sure, well, everybody dies. Like we could probably do that. And the, the more she's thought about it, the more I've looked at the script and I've never been one to like, I'm not in love with my own things. Like if I have a better idea or someone gives me a better idea, we can definitely incorporate that. In fact, um, Eileen Dietz is a good friend of mine who was part of Christmas party massacre. And she is the original uh, demon 
um, from The Exorcist. Uh, and uh, if you see, yeah, you see The Exorcist, uh, Pazuzu's face pops up. It's actually her. And I'm getting her on board for this. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that'll be uh, a done deal by the end of the week. So uh, that's another actress that I'm really happy to have in this. And it wasn't planned in the original script. I just thought, if I'm going to have her, I want to make sure there's something really good, really tangible for her to be a part of. So I'm doing some rewrites for that. Um, some of the girls in this in this picture behind us right here, uh, like, uh, let me see if they pop up. Jesse, I think, is on the top left corner. Jesse has been in uh, some great horror movies, The Clown, uh, Clown Motel, uh, which I believe is coming out pretty soon. Yeah. And we've been friends since we met at a convention in Vegas and just talked back and forth. And we've been wanting to work together just – you know, the distance and scheduling kind of never lined up. But now that we have something that we both are free to do, I'm getting her involved. Uh, Jessica Franco there in the red, uh, the red lingerie is an uh, international model who actually lives here in Bakersfield. And we've worked together many times, uh, mainly for photo shoots, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's what she focuses on. But when I, I told her about it, she said, well, I'm looking to do something different. I was like, how would you like to die in a movie? And she was all on board. Uh, it's 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 surprising how many people want to die in horror movies, and it makes me very happy to hear. See, I wouldn't mind it. I just don't want to be first. I prefer last or second to last, even. Definitely not first. And thrown through a window. Why? Because I just love that in the Friday the Thirteenth movies. I have no clue. It's just hilarious. I find it funny. <laughs> I just find it funny, and I, yeah. I always I always feel like. If I was ever in a horror movie and say, you know, I get thrown through, I know it'd be like sugar glass, but say I have a stunt double, it'd be somebody, it'd be even funnier if it was somebody that looked nothing like me. Like it was, you see me getting thrown or whatever. And then the person that actually crashes through the window is like a white guy. And then you see me laying on the ground. Uh, yes. <laughs> I love when they do that. Oh my God. Yeah. But it would work for a horror comedy. And that's one thing I love. That's one thing I love about the horror genre is you can literally go in any direction. Like how you're, you're doing like a, a horror Valentine's Day comedy it's supposed to be kind of fun ish or romantic ish it's like a romantic ish holiday but that's not gonna be a romantic time <laughs> but, but yeah, this is yeah as far from romance as you can get i think as far as valentine's day goes uh because yeah, every every valentine's day movie has that plot line of uh, a romance i'm like i don't think we need to I, I didn't even think about it when we when we started working on all this when i wrote it down i was like nah there's no love interest she's just out there for the money and to not get caught for all this murder <laughs> what, hang on a second. Kyle said, going back to my window comic, he said the window, the window throw needs to be from a good height. Otherwise, I'm not buying it. Well, if it's going to be like that, then it's definitely going to be a white guy because I'm scared of heights. So how high are we talking? That's one. That's very important. Because if that's the case, I'll just be the, you'll just see me laying on the ground after the fact. Like the white guy can go up there high and get thrown through the window. You'll see me laying on the ground. Perfect. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. I don't want to get thrown through too many windows. That's right. Yeah. Maybe like the second floor. Other than that, I'm already a short guy. So what looks like, you know, 10 feet for one person looks like 15 for me. So, yeah, I'm definitely too short to be thrown through too many things. But uh, let's try. You never know. I, yeah. I, I, maybe you better do it like one, at least two floors. That's a maybe, actually. That's a maybe. But again, I'll have to have somebody test it for me a few times to make sure I'm good if I don't have a stunt double. Yeah, I think there better be some testing involved. You better throw a potato sack. Let me see how it falls. If too many <laughs> potatoes fall out of the sack, then I'm not doing it. Yeah. Yeah, get somebody else. And I said, again, I'll be the person that lays on the ground that's hurt or whatever the case may be or dead. I'm fine with that. I just don't want to get hurt or I'm, I don't know how to land. I'm scared of heights. I'm clumsy. It's, it's not going to work for me. <laughs> Yeah, heights. Yeah, I a roller coaster. I like that idea. Uh, you know, I've I've always liked the idea of bungee jumping, but mm -hmm. just straight up falling. Uh, I don't know. I, I've done it before for a play actually, and it was not even that far. It was. I think we had like a twelve foot little balcony. I had to fall off of. Mm -hmm. We had a mattress and everything set up offside, so you couldn't see it. And um, yeah, that still screwed up my back. So ever since then, I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to fall off a bunch of stuff. Yeah. It's not going to be great. You know what it is, too? Kyle said, get a bunch of old mats. You know what it is, too? Like, if you ever went to those trampoline places or something, when you go to try to do the free fall like the kids are doing into the to that pit, I still, like, put my hands back or just do something. Like, I can't just fall flat like this. I My body will not let me. 
I'm like, let me try that. It's fun. Like the rush in your gut is fun, but I just can't. Nah, I'm sorry. Too old for that yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. Sooner or later, you got to stop jumping off of stuff. I think uh, that's for the kids. Let them do it. Yeah, yes. They heal faster. Once we fall down and twist your ankle or something, that's that's not getting back up and running the next day or the next week. That's that's That could be a couple months. <laughs> It's like, yeah, I'm done. Oh, I twisted my ankle. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done for the month. Yeah, no, I don't need to do anything. I'm going to lay in bed. I'm going to cry about it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, man. I was in a horrible accident. What happened? I fell down the stairs and twisted my ankle, man. Man, I was walking funny, and one of the steps was off, and no, ruined the week. Ruined the whole week. Ruined the whole month for me. <laughs> now, what's what's one um holiday horror you would like to do? That you have not seen besides the Valentine's Day one, like one that's just not out there. Oh, I I think the uh, the Cinco de Mayo one would be really great. I don't know if I've seen one. I know I've, I've seen some that might have similar ideas to it, but I don't think any Cinco de Mayo horror movie has been made yet. So that's definitely like on the cusp. That's the next project that I want to work on. Uh, it comes out. It would be coming out around my own birthday. There's a, an event in Texas that happens uh, around that exact same time of year. So if I could plan something for that, oh, I'd be in heaven. I would love that. I want to make it just ridiculous, pretty stereotypical of my own family's like parties that we throw here in California. Just make it dumb and fun. Yeah, that's that's all I want out of it. Oh hell yeah, that that shit. I'm all about dumb and fun. That would be fun, and I feel like that would be a fun type of film to get out there. <clears throat> and I know when you guys were talking about it yesterday. I said Kwanzaa. I know nothing about Kwanzaa either. But I just feel like I want to see a horror movie involved with Kwanzaa. Why not? Yeah. So if anybody yeah. knows anything about Kwanzaa, like legitimate stuff, not just stuff you're making up, let me go. Now. You got, yeah, you're going to have to give me a full rundown. I can do my research, but I want someone who's got, you know, life experience of what to yeah. celebrate traditions. Um, be because, fun. yeah, that's one thing. Valentine's Day, I don't think anyone has their own. Everyone has their own tradition for it. So it's not like you're stepping on any toes. You decorate, you eat chocolate with a loved one, hopefully. You have a date. But there's nothing like, there's no rules or rituals to Valentine's Day that we can mess up. So it's kind of lenient that way. Like No I, one's going to be upset. I see where you're going with that. There's not like a, I don't know if, correct me if I'm wrong, people, if it's an ethnic or a religious type of background with uh, Kwanzaa. I'm not, I have no idea. I'm sure it kind of is, <clears throat> but with thanks, not Thanksgiving, with uh, Valentine's Day, it's just pretty much. Which, hang on, really quick, you know what bothers me about Valentine's Day? I mean, my wife and I, we don't celebrate it, but there's nothing on sale for what the men want. There's no commercials for what the men want. It's diamonds, jewelry. It's like typical stuff. Can't, I mean, we like candy, don't get me wrong. But I'm like, what, what about what we want? If it's supposed to be like a couple thing, you know, like a, a love. Is it, the way the way they make it seem, it's like okay, you can get her this, you can get her. Which there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong, guys. There's nothing wrong with that. But if it's about togetherness and us, and not just you, you gotta change Valentine's Day. I say throw the whole throw the whole holiday away. Yeah, we gotta really rebuild that whole thing because yeah, it's all focused towards the ladies trying to get them to spend everything. All of a sudden, the guys are just like, if you don't do something big, you screwed up. Yeah, uh, I don't know. And my my hair. Now, if you're someone who does celebrate it, couples, you do celebrate, you celebrate the quote unquote traditional way of how it is. Guys, start off small. Don't go nuts getting her. I'm not saying don't spoil your lady. Don't take this the wrong way. But if you're your first year, your first whatever, candy and flowers is enough. You don't have to do candies, flowers, a bear, jewelry, dinner, all this other stuff, taking the whole day off sending flowers to work, doing all this other crazy stuff because then it's going to be expected all the time. Especially with you younger people. You younger people, do something small that you can, that don't spend above your wage. Do what you can afford. Yeah, that's a, that's a good lesson right there. Yeah, if you fly her to, to Hawaii or something the first time, and then next year, like, oh, I'm going to take you to dinner and get you a stuffed animal. Probably going to run into some trouble. Probably going to be some trouble there. You know, what the, you know what the best thing you could do, honestly? Cook dinner together. Have a nice, if you're old enough to drink, have a nice bottle of wine. If you're not, have some grape juice or some soda. Cook dinner together. Boom. You can't get much better than that. 
it's togetherness, it's caring, it's love. And then you sit down and you watch My Violent Valentine. That I like that idea a lot. The tradition right there. You cook dinner with your significant other. You watch this movie. You enjoy this movie. And this is what you get. Matter of fact, this is the holiday tradition. This can be your holiday tradition is when Miguel comes out with these other holiday horror comedies. Make that a date night. Whenever, you know, whatever month that is, make that Friday or Saturday night a date night. You pull up one of these movies, you eat dinner and you watch them. Boom. Simple. I love that. Yeah, that's that's the goal, really. Like if people can make that part of their their monthly routine of some side of uh, some time to take away from the holiday and then they relax and watch the movie, you know, because yeah. everyone goes crazy around uh, the big holidays. You know, you have to do a bunch of stuff for Christmas or a bunch of stuff uh, for Thanksgiving. You deserve a moment to kind of sit back uh, and shut off your brain and just watch a good movie and relax. Agree. Hopefully that's what this is. That's what I'm hoping. It will be. It will be, man. Because like, like I said, I've seen you on your cigar show in the mornings and I've seen you on any last words. I've seen you on your sh- girls going gin on Thursday nights. And like the, the type of personality you have, you have that personality to where people are going to watch your stuff because you have the friendly personality, but you're also funny. And you got to be funny to make a funny movie, I feel. Like, you have to be funny. You have to have some sort of funniness to you. I think you're right. I think absolutely. A little bit of that. It's, it's one of the hardest things, that comedic timing. Like, what looks funny on the page might not work later on. Or just because you can be funny in that moment, you don't know if you can make it work while you're writing everything out. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I do a lot of writing. So that's, that's one of my, you know, another goal is to get more writing done even so. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping some of that funny kind of shows out in the film. Uh, still a little bit nervous, always nervous when something new's coming up, any project, any kind of project. Yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it gets rough, but at the same time, I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I really hope people do enjoy it. And, uh, I hope we can find that audience who wants to see the next one and the next one. I feel, see, and that's why, again, why I go back to, I love horror because horror, I feel like at the very, very least, they're going to give you a chance. Maybe not every single horror fan, but there's going to be a, like a, a core group that just watches, that'll watch anything. I'm in that core group. I watch damn near anything at least once. And they'll give you that chance. And if they, it's getting, it, it, I mean, it could be one of those movies to where people, it could be so bad it's good. Or it could be one of those, it could be one of those movies again where people hate it, but they have to, they feel like they just have to see it. Like, I don't like this movie, but I have to watch it. Or it could just be just something that, they just enjoy like that. But again, that's just with horror. I don't think there's any other genre of movie where I can say I've seen the worst movie ever and you should check it out. You're not going to want to run to it. Perfect example. Batman and Robin. Fucking terrible. I did a podcast. That's the only reason why I did it. That's the only reason I recently, you know, watched it recently. But it's not something I want to see again. It's not, you know, Thanks Killing was a better movie than that. And that wasn't even a serious movie. <laughs> that's saying, oh, saying something oh i agree so much on that yeah i agree 100 percent. i'd rather watch oh man i'd rather watch things killing than quite a few of these huge you know like blockbuster movies they want to come out with where it's just it's overblown and it's crazy where you could have just stripped everything down and made something entertaining like they did with things killing yes you do so much more when you just focus on on making everything on screen uh appealing and fun to watch versus yeah. trying to get glitz and glamoury and and too many puns there's so many puns in batman and robin oh my god it was just oh my god it was just horrible it was horrible which that episode is out on the z network on the youtube channel people if you do want to see it i got fucking wasted towards like a little bit after the middle and the rest of the, i was just there was a listen there was a point where i was just sitting there like this. <laughs> too much southern comfort too much under Southern Comfort, but I don't take any responsibility for that. I blame um, my co-hosts, James, Ibrahim, and Chris, all three of them. It's their fault. They weren't here. We're all in different locations, but it's still their fault. I believe that. I've, it's happened to me as well. Like uh, During the show, one of these times when we were selling our cigars, uh, I did a, a little promo like, hey, if everyone buys a pack of five pack today, I will take a shot. I thought we'd sell like two or three. Uh, by the end of the night, we sold 15. Nice. And um, uh, Frankie was on with me, my brother, uh, who does uh, the Bakersfield Gentleman stuff with me. And he did one shot that night. And I did the rest and was not was not expecting. Um, oh, God. Yeah, it was. Oh, I don't even know how to describe that night. 
You got to fake it next time, man. What you do is you get a bottle of vodka and water. <laughs> you take a shot. To, you take like maybe two, three shots of vodka. Then you're starting taking like 10 shots of water. They won't know the difference. But see, that's the thing, though. I will know the difference. And I can't do that to anybody. I got to if you're if you're buying, I will do those shots. Like we're going to do something like that for uh, for my uh, my violent Valentine. I'll do another show where we do something similar. Um, it, might, it might just be shots again, too. I don't mind doing it once in a while. But I gotta plan the next day out pretty carefully because you know from like from twenty one to now. Yeah, I'm like I'm just useless, I'm useless the next day. What, what you gotta do? You'd you'd have to do it, and maybe even get a team with you, like a team if they're involved. In, just like say, listen, I need a favor, blah blah blah. People buy these. One person, you know, you don't have to take twenty shots if twenty people buy or back it. But let's kind of like knock down these shots. If there's five of us on here, let's knock down these shots so everybody doesn't have to take. You don't have to take 20 shots, but I think that's a good idea. And I'm volunteering I like that. to help you out with that. <laughs> I appreciate that because, yeah, saving my liver, saving my next day. Oof. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But yeah. I would be doing 100 Proof Southern Comfort People. I would be doing something a lot softer because I learned my lesson. I mean, I know better, but, yeah, I'm going to be smart. <laughs> I like where your head's at, yeah, because, yeah, 100 Proof, pretty much anything is pretty much going to be the end of my night. Uh, after a few, when one, a few of them, and then all of a sudden it's like, uh, all right, we're either going to just completely drink for the entire night, or I'm done at that point. And oh. usually it leans that I'm going to drink the whole night. That just it just is what it is. It varies for me. It depends on how drunk I am at that point. Like, like I said for that last episode, when I was done with this, and, and the funny thing was, I'm the one that was in, like, I was recording on my end, so I'm the one who had to hit stop <laughs> and all this other shit. Which I did successfully. And I just Ooh. went upstairs and laid down. Came up the next day. Saved. I mean, everything was saved. I just let the video convert. And I went downstairs. I was like, there's no way in hell. I'm surprised I made it down my damn steps. Because I recorded <laughs> my attic. And I made plenty of trips going up and down the stairs that night. Just through the during the show. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad everything went well then, yeah. It did, and it's funny to talk about now. And I mean, it was Batman and Robin. I blame that movie, and I blame my co-host. So that's another thing I blame. Well, that's definitely a fifty-fifty split on that co-host and Batman. Ro- Batman and Robin, yeah, you got to get a little drunk for that one, at least a little bit. Oh, I was wasted. I was the, I was sober when I watched it, but it was reviewing it is when it just ah, man. It's it's, <laughs> it's 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 one of those things where. Again, if it's like you want to watch a horrible, a horrible um, hero movie or, you know, DC movie, Marvel movie, people are like, no, I don't want to see that. You want to watch a horrible horror movie? I'll check it out. 100%. There's some that I regret. Not reg- I won't say I regret watching. I just will never watch them again. Like one called Blood Lake from 1987. Miguel, don't watch that. Oh, I'm sorry. My phone's messed up. Oh, there we go. We're, we're back. I'm back. Um, yeah, I've, I heard about that one. Probably, yeah. Probably not going to watch that. Mm-mm. Don't do it to yourself. Again, I know I say I will never tell you not to watch something, but that's one where you're just going to be like, ah, fuck. <laughs> Why? There's a couple out there. Like, I will never watch the Sharknado movies. That's just, I can't get into them. There's one where they went to space that I want to watch just because they went to space. But my wife and I watched the first one and a half, like when they first came out, when they were first thrown onto Netflix. We we're going to go through and try to watch every single one of them. Got through one and a half. I'm surprised we got that far. I'm just like, and I know it's supposed to be shitty, but it was just, I don't know what it was. I really don't remember what it was. See, that, that upsets me because they have a budget. They had some name actors and they're like, why are you trying to make a bad movie when you got everything you can have to make a good movie? Like well, most of the, oh, it's just, uh, how talented are those actors and actresses? They're like from the, sitcom days you know like 90210 clueless type of shit i'm not saying that they can't act but they're more from that era and that's where they blew up from and did similar stuff to that to jumping into something like sharknado i think sharknado would have been better if there was i don't want to call them no names but let's just say independent actors like more of the indie uh, type actors yeah, with that movie because yeah. you can recognize their faces and you kind of you can kind of expect the cheesiness you can respect the cheesiness more of the movie and if it's a big name actor no, a hundred percent. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking too. Because when you see an indie film that's done and like you think, man, this is so bad, it's good. 
it's because of those facts right there. Like you're seeing actors you may not have never seen before. Uh, you're seeing something that's an original idea. Like a like Sharknado was was pretty original. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen another Shark Tornado movie. Now there's a bunch of copycats, but that's only after the fact. Yeah. But then you have it been these big, yeah, it could have been much better. <laughs> the shark came in more sense. Not that a horror movie has to make sense, because that's but it would have made more sense. It would have been a better movie. It's around beaches. You, know, you have the hurricane coming, the sharks come in, and in the air, whatever. But shark it was just, I don't know, man. It was, it was rough. Rough. <laughs> that's really I'm, I'm hoping so. I'm, I know. Fingers yeah, crossed. Because I mean, even you know, even you know, with our, our modest budget, we're keeping this as low of the budget as we can and as small a cast as we can to do this quickly and do it as best we can. But we still got some names in that I'm very proud of. Like I said, Eileen and, uh, and Julie right there in the pink lingerie. I can't even say how many movies she's been in. She is, she is a modern scream queen. And she and her husband run um, uh, Days of the Dead, uh, Las Vegas, Atlanta, and quite a few other ones. So they, they know what the horror audience likes. And to have her a part of this makes me very happy. Uh, it just, I, I couldn't ask for more. Like, I, I'm blown away by how many of, of all the actors who are willing to be in this with us and to tell them what kind of ridiculousness we want to shoot. And mm -hmm. for them to give the thumbs up to be a part of it, I, I consider myself unbelievably lucky just for that alone. And oh, hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Yeah. No matter what happens, I, I want to make it as best I can for the audience and for them because their time and their effort is to me more valuable than my own because I'm asking someone else uh, to take part in something that it could be great. It could be ridiculously whatever it is, but it will be something by the end of the day. You know, it will be uh, uh, something to add to your horror watch list, hopefully for Valentine's Day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that. I agree with that one million percent. I'm gonna share my screen really quick just to show you guys the fundraiser page for this movie. I do believe you need to check it out and see it. And you can, can you see the page, the screen? Oh yeah, I see that. Yeah, perfect. But yeah, you guys got to go here, and I mean they have quite a few. He has quite a few perks on here. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually, if you go down to the bottom one, um, thanks to Julie, we have another one added there where, uh, let's say you don't have a date for Valentine's, well, Wendy uh, and Julie, who is playing Wendy in the movie, uh, will actually give you a call around Valentine's Day whenever you're free, and she will have a chat with you, you know, one-on-one -on -one to thank you for donating and to be your Valentine's Day date. So Julie really stepped up the game there. Uh, she is married, gentlemen, so you better be gentle at least, but it's wonderful. <laughs> That's that, that's awesome though. I mean, it's cool that <clears throat> what I like about the indie scene and what I like about this is a lot of people are willing to help, whether it's financially throwing a couple of dollars or sharing sharing it, or just like, hey, I have a I have an idea for a perk, or hey, here, you know, I can do something for a perk for you, or whatever the case may be. And I mean, I think it's great, man. I think it's great, and I feel like everybody should go check this out. Go to the fundraiser. I put it in the chat. It's in the description. It'll be in the YouTube description in the bottom. I put it in the chat as well. Go click that link. And I mean, five bucks will help people. Five bucks will help. But if you can afford to, and there's more perks on here, like you see right here. The most expensive per perk is 200. That's not bad. What about, yeah, we, um, honestly, if I could make movies without charging anybody a cent, I would love to do that. that that'd be the goal one day is just make things and not even worry about the money part. But until that day comes, I mean, we got to put this together and we can't do it without your guys' help. It is a uh, hundred percent, uh, um, you know, appreciated every single cent, even $1, $5, whatever you can. Yeah. It helps. And, you know, even if you can't, you know, put anything in right now, it's not like we're stopped making movies. Don't worry about it. You know, if you just feel like if you can just share it, get the word out with us, that's a huge help too. Every time you share every comment, everything. Yeah. The, yeah. The share button is a huge help huge bigger than people think because you figure we share all kinds of bullshit on social media every single day i know i do so it's like if you can just click the share button for people that are trying to do something support their businesses support their indie films movies shows podcasts whatever it is hit that share button once or twice a day it takes two seconds really it really helps out unbelievably like our buddy leo uh he's out in illinois and he started watching the uh the cigar show and 
and he he doesn't you know he can't really put in a lot of money which is totally fine i understand that mm -hmm. but he shares unbelievable amounts of times like every day until facebook gets mad and says he can't share for the rest of the day and he'll still keep trying to share yep and that kind of help it, it it touches right here it gets right to the heart a little, yeah. little tear in the eye but i keep that off camera so no one sees me crying but um <laughs> the, the fact that we have people who are willing to help us like that in any sense it, yeah. it's it's unbelievable so when we started this we were just doing filmmaking well, before the live stuff ever happened, before we could really use YouTube to the advantage we can now or any of the streaming platforms. And I never saw it getting to this potential where we could reach people you know, across the nation like we're doing right now or people in Australia. We have some people who watch in Dubai, uh, Canada. They're, they're all over the world and they want to be a part of your, you know, your stuff. So if you keep putting the word out there, you'll reach them sooner or later. Which I think that right there, I think is awesome. Like what you just said, like again, how me and you were talking, we're pretty much opposite sides of the United States. Not pretty much we are. I'm on the East Coast. Damn near as far as you can get on the East Coast. You're as far as you can get on the West Coast. So it's, it's like true. that right there alone. And I've talked to people overseas, have people on from overseas, which it's it's such an amazing thing to where, and I'm sure you, I know you get this too, to where like someone will send you an email or whatever and just say, hey, I heard about your show or I seen your show. I'd like to be a guest. And I'm just like, that's fucking awesome. But how did you hear about it? Oh, because I heard it from so and so, word them out, whatever the case may be. Like I've had people, especially in the indie scene, message me like, "Hey, I'd like to come on your show. I heard about your show from so and so or from another indie person, whatever the case may be." And they say that you really like to promote indie and you know have indie people. I'm like, hell yeah, of course. As long as it's horror, come right on. I like, I love that. That's awesome. The yeah. There, because it's this is a thing to where there's so much for all of us like there's so much for all of us so whether it's podcasting movie making whatever you do there's so much for all of us to go out there and grow from even if it's the same lanes we're all doing it a little bit different like me and joe for example we both have podcasts yes they're both horror but they're completely some similarities but for the most part they're completely different the way we run our shows the way we do our styles both laid back shows both great great shows of course but there's completely like there's a lane for both of us and all the other horror podcasters out there. Just and with you with the indie movies, there's a lane for everybody and there's so much room. I'm just like, if we just help each other grow, we can all grow like this. You know, that we don't need to have the one percent at the top eating everything. We can eat that same stuff too. We can have that same. Yes. And I feel like yes, I really feel like indie is way more creative because you have to be. Oh yeah. Don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean I don't like remix. I'm a I'll. Uh, I'm a sucker for remix. I'll watch them all. But you have to be because it's like, okay, I have to come up with this creative story that somebody's going to want to actually listen to or watch. Or it's just something creative, something entertaining that someone's going to listen to or watch because I don't have a big name behind me. And no disrespect to people in India. I just mean like I don't have like a, a Will Smith. That's the first thing that came to mind. I don't have a Will Smith back in this movie or in this movie. Therefore, I have to give them a reason to watch this. And I have yeah. a own story, whether it be funny, whatever the case may be. And that's what indie does for the most part. That's what indie does. You're going to have some things you don't like, which is perfectly fine. That's hundred percent fine. You do not like, there's so many movies I've watched that I did not like at all. And there's nothing wrong with that. It happens, but they did yeah. they made it, you know, it fuck. It's just like Hollywood movies. There's plenty of Hollywood movies that a lot of us hate. And they have the, the thing that gets me with that is they have the budget. So I'm like, yo, you have, Let's say $10 million you put into this movie. Might not be a shit ton of money to them, but for us, shit. Yeah, I could make, with $10 million, I could make movies for, for years, no yeah. problem. And I could do things on a nonstop basis, but I'm, I'm working at a smaller scale. I get that. And they're working at, you know, much bigger. They have investors to worry about. So mm -hmm. once you get to those points, you know, money is a great thing, but it can also be those moments where, it hinders everything. You know, that money hose washes away problems, but it'll also wash away options you have. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's just, it, it's a double-edged sword, really. Because like uh, Robert Rodriguez, uh, when he was first making his stuff, um, he was given, I think it was three or four times bigger a budget for the next Spy Kids movies, I think it was. Mm -hmm. But he turned it down so he can continue to keep uh, creative control as best he could. Um, and I, I respect him for that. I love that. I was gonna, that's why I was saying earlier with the whole network thing, like you own your own stuff. Don't sell your stuff. I don't care if it's 
if you're still the major, if if you do, make sure the, you're the majority owner so that you can still you have creative control and all that. But I'd say, no, I'd say keep 100 percent of your stuff. And I'm only saying this because I'm someone who I'm an avid listener of podcasters. The Joe Budden podcast is one that I listen to a lot. Yeah. And hearing what artists, what musicians, and artists go through when they sell their masters or they don't own their masters, it's sad if you really think about it. And this goes back years, years, and years ago 40, 50, let's just say hundreds of years. Ago. I don't know how many years ago, but it's sad because you're the one who's creating this beautiful masterpiece that everybody around the world loves that's in movies and all this shit, but you don't own it. Because yeah, that's got to be a crazy feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the, because they gave you, yes, they gave you this opportunity, yes, they gave you this contract. But it's like once that contract's up, they still own your shit and they don't sell it to you for years. You, if you're lucky, you, some people get it back. And that's why I just say it's, it's as much as you can keep as much as you can. I say keep 100 percent and just figure out ways to make deals if it comes to a bigger promotion coming for you. Because, yes, it'll change your life. But I look at it like if a network or a producer, whatever the case may be, and this goes all across the board, music, movies, podcasts and all, everything. If a big network that's willing to pay you money, they're like, hey, we'll give you, let's just say $100,000 a year, $500,000 a year, right? And they're, uh, in your eyes, or sorry, in their eyes, you're probably worth triple that. They know, they're like, okay, well, this, they have this, they do this, 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 this already. With this extra backing, yes, we can get them this, 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 plus this money, but we're going to make three times that much off of this person because they already have all this stuff. They do everything. They're great. We don't have to do all we have to do is line up with money and maybe a studio, maybe a studio if you want to do it like that. Yeah, oh, just which like, I to- I totally get that. That's cool just, if you if you want to go into that into that um, way of doing business. Um, but then you have to you worry about like you're saying, like if somebody else owns your stuff, I mean they they own it. You mean you might want to change something? You might not feel comfortable like oh this is not what I wanted by the end of it. I mean you you kind of sold those rights away to to be able to change and keep uh, progressing how you want to do. Yeah. I'll make sure you have creative control over your stuff. Make sure you own your name, though. Make sure you own your name. Make sure you own your prop, your stuff. So that way, if say if you had a falling out with the, with the network or whatever the case may be, or a label or a production company, whatever it is, you can still go away with whatever your name is, whatever your entertainment name is, whatever that is, and your stuff. Like, okay, well, it didn't work here, but I'm going over here with my name because people know me from before this. They're gonna know me after this. I might have got a few more fans, you know, in the meantime, but I'm gonna go over here. But ownership, very important. The dollar amount, it's great because it, it's life changing, but it comes with a price. And I'm not talking about the money. It comes with a big price. And again, like I said, too, if you're somebody who makes it, you blow up huge, but they're like, okay, you can't use up. Oh, you know, it's a great example. I don't watch it anymore, but I like to watch documentaries on it. It's wrestling. I guess with the WWE, they're not allowed to have like a Twitch channel, they're not allowed to do a lot of shit. They don't own the rights to their names and all this stuff. And I do get it. It's a little bit different. I do get it. But at the same time, it's like if it's someone that really blows up, like say I, it's probably different for him, but say somebody like The Rock, known worldwide. Now, imagine being known worldwide like that, but like, OK, you can't say you're The Rock. OK, well, you can't go out anywhere and do this as this. You can't have your Twitch channel. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this unless we own it pretty much. Unless we get our, our cut off the top, then you can do it. Like, yeah, that's crazy to me. That's crazy because they were just a uh, yeah. I was just hearing about that because they have a a website called Cameo, I think it's called, where mm-hmm. you you can pay a celebrity and they'll give you a little shout out or a, like a birthday wish or something. And the WWE stars actually had to take theirs all down. Like if you're using your character that we own, you cannot be using that to make other money. I don't. And, even, I think even if you're out of your character as well, though, like at least for the Twitch thing, I think even if you're out of your character. Which I think is nuts. I don't even think that should be legal. Stuff like that should not be legal. If I'm working a nine to five job, you got to do your job, which I do get the contracts and all that other bullshit. Whatever you sign, you sign. I get that. But that's certain shit shouldn't be allowed to be in contracts. Pretty much, we own you, is what they're saying. <laughs> like, we own you. We're paying you, yes, but we own you and everything you, yeah, you don't do this, don't say this. I understand, don't embarrass the company. But if you're someone who wants to do a Twitch channel, make a couple extra dollars, and you're using your fame from what you got. That should be fine. Yeah, hundred percent. Like that's yeah, that's right. There is just straight up stealing someone at that point. You're not if you're not allowed to use your own face to mm-hmm. to make a little bit of money from your recognition from the hard work you put in. 
That that is insane. Yeah, people do bust and and all that stuff. They do bust their ass. Like with wrestling, they bust their ass to get to that hump. Even if WWE is the top place where they want to get to, yes, they bust their ass to get there. Yes, WWE is like the big thing where you get your name, your fame, and all this other stuff. If if you're one of the top ones, that because just like everything else, you're not always gonna be on the top. I'm just saying, if you're one of the top ones, you get all that cool shit. But it's like. I don't really own this. Like, yeah, I, I have my money, but I don't really own certain things of it, which I, I get to an extent, but at the same time, I look at it like if it wasn't for all those athletes and these sports, actors, actors, all this stuff, all these places would be nowhere because you need, yes, you need the billionaire or whatever to back it for those type of things, but you also need the people to act out these scenes or to, you know, for wrestling to, you know, to wrestle basically. <laughs> To yeah, storylines and all that. If you don't have the people, or if you don't have the right people that can actually pull these things off, you're not gonna have shit. Oh no, hundred percent. Like I was, what was the movie I was watching last night? It was Catch Catch Me If You Can. It's a it's a Hollywood movie about that dude who did a bunch of check fraud. But the the idea is like it's kind of interesting. But it wouldn't be a movie I'd watch if it wasn't for Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hanks being in it. I mean, they they make that, and you're not gonna watch wrestling nowadays if it wasn't for the guys who came before. Yeah. Like like The Rock or Stone Cold Steve Austin, who is my favorite. Um, you, you wouldn't have the industry without those people. And the fact that they are now being bogged down like that, that's that's just crazy. I think it's more so the newer people, though, that's being bogged down like that. Because, again, like with the whole Twitch thing and all that, I'm not 100% sure. But it, it is crazy. And just because you threw out your favorite wrestler, mine was Shawn Michaels. <laughs> with the heartbreak. Nah, that's my brother, Sha- Shawn Michaels. Yeah, he loves him. And like my... Uh, Real quick, to speak on wrestling, just because we brought it up, Attitude Era was so fucking great, man. The best. Like right, be- yes. I'll say right before, a little before the Attitude Era is when I started watching, and then maybe a little after the Attitude Era, and then after that, I just I don't know. But that was that was the best era, in my opinion, by far. Again, I wasn't born to see the early '80s and all that stuff. I was born in '85, so I only got to see so much. <laughs> Well, that's that's the that's the golden era, right there. When they had the um, Frankie, when did the Monday Night Wars happen? Uh, I'm, I'm the 90s, I think. What? When was it? 90s. Like in the, yeah, like in the nineties, right there. The Monday Night Wars, where they yeah. were fighting for ratings. Ninety six, seven ish. Just bumped everything up. Not just their numbers themselves, but the quality of everything. Oh yeah, it's just it's, insane. Which I like that kind of stuff, though. I like it because competition for those it makes it makes you want to be better i do wish here's what i do wish they would have done though i wish they did the competition stuff as they should have but they should have did crossover matches they should have kind of helped instead of because wwe is pretty much like a monopoly like they vince mcmahon bought out a lot of companies and shit it would have been better i think it would have been cool if they kind of you know built each other up behind the scenes so to speak did crossover matches okay We'll go over and fight on WCW Nitro. The WCW guys are going to win. You come and fight in the WWF because it was WWF at the time. WWF guys are going to win. We do pay-per-view. Just kind of, which I do get it because at the end of the day, they want money. But I think it would help them all out. And WCW would probably still be around. Yeah, you never know. If, if they would have been a little more cooperative together, maybe it'd be a better place right now even. Like bump everybody up a bit more. Yeah. But then you have like, I think Ring of Honor right now. You have AEW. Mm-hmm. Um Damn, there's another one that uh, I cannot remember the name of. Um, I don't, there, there's some really great other uh, promotions out there that are just doing great stuff. And there's like, what is it? Uh, New Japan, I believe. Um, yes, that's the thank you. Yeah. You said AEW and then WWE also has the NXT thing now, which I think is pretty cool for like up and coming people to kind of help them develop, which I think is awesome. I think it's awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We need something like that for independent movie makers in a sense like in a sense of where you can go here you can kind of learn the ropes and with that group you go in here's my idea with this say you go in there with a group of however many people say your crew for this movie you go in there with this crew of people but you learn the ropes of things and with this group of people or maybe even some people you don't know as well with that group of people you come up with a a idea a movie because you're pretty much for wrestling you come up with a character come up with a storyline so same thing with with a movie, indie horror movie, you progress, you see what you do, and your movie comes out on an independent scene or whatever, even if it comes out, you know, prime, all that other cool stuff, and just kind of see what you build from that. If no, it, I totally get that, yeah. If there's like some sort of, like a budget, one of these billionaires got to back it. <laughs> one of these billionaires got to back it. Even if, even if they had the story out for you, so say they own that story, right? 
because they have the story for you written or whatever. They have certain stories. You come up with the story, but you're not giving them your stories. You're giving them just stories just to kind of, okay, we'll do this. And then, you know, you get a little back and get some fan base and kind of see where it goes. There needs to, there needs to be something where people can kind of work together and help build each other up for this kind of stuff, though. Because I know it does get tough. It does get expensive, especially with this whole pandemic bullshit, too, to where a lot of people are out of work. Not to the point of where they're getting, even if they're getting paid or unemployment, but a lot of people are out of work. And there's a lot of people that are not getting paid and getting kicked out of their homes. And it's not their fault. And there's a lot of, I'm not just talking, just that's people in general, but just, I'm just thinking of creators right now. It's like, there needs to be a thing for creators to create. There needs to be a place for creators to create or just something where creators can kind of create and kind of build off each other. I mean, maybe that's something I'm working on with the Z network, kind of create and build off each other and help each other out. Cause one hand watches the other man. I mean, like I said earlier, we can all grow. We all, we can all help each other grow. It's the fastest way to grow is helping each other. Oh, a hundred percent. And that's, yeah, that's a great way to look at it. That's a great thing you're doing because I uh, you look at um, uh, broken lizard, you know, they all came up together and they kept working together. Mm-hmm. Like you look at those guys from what's that, that show, uh, Impractical jokers, oh. they all stuck together and just kept building. And now they're doing so many ridiculous things and, and they adapted to what's going on right now with the pandemic, yeah. you know, filming on their own. Um, um, the dinner thing, you watch the dinner thing. That's, that's funny. Oh uh, yeah. I liked it. I haven't seen a lot of them, but every time I enjoy it. My, my wife and I watch those all the time. Hilarious. I did. And what I like, see now with that really quick, and then we'll get back to the horror. I promise people. But with that, what I like about it is that's genuinely a group of friends that grew up together and they all had this dream of just like doing what they're doing pretty much now doing what they're doing now. And they just stuck with it, stuck with it, stuck with it. I'm yes. They work their nine to fives and bust their ass with that, but they stuck with it. And then boom. And I'm going to tell you right now what in practical jokers, because my wife loves to say this every single time we're watching it damn near, but in practical jokers first came out, my wife and my brother were like in tears watching it. I wasn't paying attention. I usually don't find white people that funny all the time. I'm sorry, but I was wrong. <laughs> I love these white guys. They're hilarious. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say white people aren't funny because I, I know a lot of... Okay, now I sound like... <laughs> <laughs> you know a lot of good ones. It's fine. That's I know, cool. I know a lot of good ones. But no, like a lot of... Fr- like all my friends are funny. All different races. But, you know, there's just certain people that just I don't find that funny. Like, here's an example of someone that you guys tried to put on a pedestal a few years back. Dan Cook or Dane Cook. Oh, no. yeah, Oof. Not funny at all. Nope. Not fucking funny at all. I like... Yeah, it- I like... um. What is it? I like, you know what it is? I like the white people that, uh, no, this sounds bad. Gary Owen. Yep. Love him. He's always like black people love him. We took, I, I'm sorry, white people, but he's, he, we, we, he, we were not going to let him use the N word, but in that racial draft, we, we took him. We're, we're taking him definitely because he's in all, he's in all, all he is in is black movies. His wife is black. His kids are mixed, obviously. So it's just like, you know, we got him. See, and the opposite over here, we're trying to get rid of Carlos Mencia ever since he was, you know, was funny for that five minutes he was. He had his TV show, and Mencia was just, I just didn't care for him. Never did. Um, and now they found out why, because he was stealing everybody's jokes over at the comedy, uh, the comedy club. And uh, just, it, it goes both ways, you know? It really does. We, gotta, we, we, we have to have a race for people that nobody wants. Let's call them like the nobodies or whatever. There are Kelly there, yeah. Donald Trump. Carlos Mencia, you know, Nicolas Cage. Nobody wants him. Oh, I love Nicolas Cage. I'm going to have to oh. disagree. Whenever I can see him go absolutely batshit crazy, I'm happy. I'm happy, camper. Ah, oh, man, Miguel. I was just talking about how such a great character you were, and you go home and say something crazy like that. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I don't know if I want to back this movie anymore. Nah, I'm playing. I'm still- I, don't, I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> it's... As long as he's not in the movie, I support this 100%. Well, I, that's a goal. One day I'm going to make something where he can just go absolutely crazy like he did in uh, uh, Mom and Dad. Actually, I liked him in that. Just friggin' his ridiculousness makes me happy. And uh, when I can see that, not not so much like Ghost Rider. That was terrible. Um, the heck was that other one? Um, gosh, dang it. There was another movie that just is awful. And it's 100% because of him. Most of the I cannot remember the name of it. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh. I'll tell you what, man. I liked Face Off and I liked Gone in 60 Seconds. Face Off, John Travolta was in there, so that helped. Yeah. Gone in 60 Seconds, 
I love cars, and there's attractive females in the movie. Had nothing to do with Nicolas Cage. Um, that's like the only two I can think of. A lot of his movies I haven't seen, and I had to do on my other show. I had to do a review on three of his movies in one episode. That was fuck you, Chris, for that. But uh, that was a tough one. <laughs> that was, oh, wait, what, what were the three? I forgot. Um, it was it was like three newish ones because he's been in like thirty some odd movies in the past few years because he takes like any role. And what he what Chris did was he he I guess he pulled names out of a hat like he just found about thirty movies no lie shook them up put them in his hat and just pulled out three movies and was like yo these are the ones we're and just told me he was like yo these are the ones we're doing I was like okay <laughs> I like it I like that plan it's a great plan and actually what we did was um we actually came up with a wheel which I did for this show too for horror research thirty when I do movie reviews and for uh, popcorn and pints. And on um, Popcorn and Pines, I think we'd start out, we did like 40 movies, just spin it, spin the wheel, whatever it picks is what we're reviewing next. So for Popcorn and Pines, Saturday, 9 o'clock Eastern time, we're doing the movie uh, Crow. It's oh, nice. 80s, I believe. I've never seen it. I, did, I watched some of it earlier today, but I had to do so. I was like, I got to get some editing done. I'm on vacation this week. I got to do some work. <laughs> All right, I got to edit at least. But I'm going to watch that probably Friday. And then tomorrow night, my friend James and I, because the wheel from... Shit, last night, Sleepwalkers. We're doing that tomorrow night on this show, nine o'clock. Nice. And I'm just like, fuck yeah. I I want to do an indie wheel. So Miguel, we gotta get this movie going so I can do an indie wheel and throw this on there. And it could be. I'm excited for that. That that's what I need to do. I need to do an indie horror movie wheel. Oh hell yeah! Oh god, I would love that. So yes, this movie, man, I'm I'm excited for it though. Like I really am. I heard you talk, like I said, I heard you talking about it with Joe last night, and then what you were discussing with it, and just what I read. And I just think it's gonna be some, it's gonna be fun. It has to be fun. Even that, with, that's the so, goal. With, yeah, with the random stuff that had me laughing last night was when you guys were talking about um in the backyard just having somebody get hit hit by a car. <laughs> I was just like, that was so fucking ridiculous and hilarious. Even if it was like a loop of the same person. <laughs> like, what the, what the fuck? Yeah, a really bad day car. i would i would love that yeah uh, it, hey man if i could do it i would do it for you i wouldn't really get hit but i'm just saying just that guy in the background you just see just walking across the street boom and yeah. if you're in this movie this is one thing i do i do want to stress if you're in this movie if you're a part of this movie and these indie movies promote the hell out of it because I see a lot of times where you see the actors and actresses not promoting it. I'm like, you're in it. How am I promoting this movie more than you? And I'm just a podcaster. I'm not, I have nothing to do with this movie. I'm just sharing it because I want to see the shit come out. I want to review it and all that fun stuff. But you're in it and you don't have like one share for it until that, it out and you see how good it does. And like, oh, I was in this. Mo-. No, share it from the beginning. Share it requires everybody. Yeah. Everyone's got to pitch in for that because. Yeah, there's there's no other option. You can't compete with you know Hollywood budget as far as promotion goes. You can't do the same advertisements. There's no billboards going up anytime soon. I'm not going to do radio, you know, plugs. It's it's this kind of stuff right here, which I like way more, obviously. Oh yeah. And it's it's the cast and crew being excited about something. And if, if you're not excited about it, you know, I I don't know why you're in it. I agree. I agree with you 100 percent because I've again I've worked with other indie having people on here from the indie scene, and I'm just like, it's crazy. Because I'll have like a director on it, like they they're, they won't name names, of course, but they'll just say like it's crazy how you're doing these movies, and a lot of actors and actresses will not share it on their social media pages. And I'm just like, I don't understand that. I always make a joke, but I'm being dead ass serious. I could be an extra movie just walking across the scene. I'll tell you the exact second I'm in that movie. Like yo, I was in that uh, My Violent Valentine movie. Like really, you were? Well, I didn't even see you. Oh, I was a, I was a guy that kept getting hit by the car. <laughs> I can never see. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the thing. Yeah, we have to have people who are excited to be a part of it. Like, it's it's a job. I get that, but at the same time, if you're not excited about that kind of job, it's a, you got to find a different line of work. Yeah. And that's I've been really, you know, fortunate because like, everybody who's been a part of this, they, I don't have to ask them uh, to share. They ask me what they can share. I'm like, dude, share as much as you want. Share whatever you want. Um, this is not a closed set or anything, you know, take your selfies behind the scenes, just help get the word out however we can, and we're going to make it happen. And it's, it's again, really blessed to have the people that we'll work with, uh, from Joe to Jesse to everybody in between, 
Mm. And it's it's exciting to see everybody working together to make something happen like this. See, that's awesome. Now, real that is really awesome. Really quick though, uh, like props. I know you're gonna have some some sort of small props here and there. Are you gonna add those into the perks as well? Oh yeah, whatever I can. I'm definitely going to. I just want to make sure that uh, uh, whatever I send in the mail is not gonna get anyone in trouble. First of all, that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, if anything, because I want to make sure the cast gets first kind of choice on that kind of stuff. But everyone's really cool about putting that stuff in to make sure it continues. Mm -hmm. And um, that's that's pretty much the only criteria right there. Is I want to make sure that the cast uh, gets as much as they can out of this as possible because they're putting in so much work. And again, we're, we're keeping the, the budget as low as we can just to make sure uh, that we can move on to the next one and keep doing it over and over again. And then we'll grow together. You know, everyone will benefit uh, as we as we progress. I like that. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. And I mean, I can't wait. To, I can't wait for this again. I can't wait for this to come out. I can't wait to get the bloody bear perk because that's what I had to jump out. I was like, I was reading. I was like, oh, okay, these all sound dope. Let me get the bloody bear. And I, when I heard you talking about it last night, too, I was like, yes, because it's, it's just one of those things where if I can. I will, you know, I will back it however much I can afford at the time. And then if I can get something like a physical, physical something from that movie, I want to just because it's one of those things where X, only X amount of people are going to have them. <laughs> yes. I don't. Yes. How, no matter how big or how small the movie is, only X amount of people are going to have those things. And you could be one of those people to where it's like, oh, shit, you, you know, you show it on camera. Oh, shit, you have one of those, too. Yeah, there's only like 50 people are going to get this. Go get it. Which by oh, 100 percent. There's 49 of those perks left. Go get it, people. And that's it. They'll, they'll be done. That tier will close off right then and there. Uh, I really like the uh, uh, Valentine's Day card one. Thanks to all the actresses who are pitching in some photo shoots for that. That's going to be a lot of fun, too. Um, and there are there are some more perks coming your guys' way. So if you if you see some on there you like, hop on it. But don't worry, because there will be other stuff for you as well. Awesome. Um, I was, and we're trying to move away from like just the normal you know T-shirt stuff, because I, I have a lot of horror T-shirts I love to wear, but I get, you want some different once in a while. So we're just trying to find something a little different here and there for everybody. Okay, Miguel. I'm going to speak for myself when I say this. This, this. this picture you sent me right here behind me would be dope on a shirt. I am going to say that. <laughs> I think we can make that work then. I think we can make it work. I want one because boom, promo right here on the shirt. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I'm going to message you. I can't wait to see it. I'm, I, I, lo like, I, I love horror shirts. Like The majority of my closet on my side of the closet, the little side that I get, you know, but uh, the majority of my closet for my stuff is horror shirts. Like that's pretty much all I wear. And it, it gets to the point to where before this whole pandemic stuff, the few times, the handful of times where I did not wear a horror shirt. Work. Most of in particular, yeah. just, what, uh, what's going on? Like, where's your shirt? We got it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> they expect it. They expect it. I get that. But it, it's cool though. Cause they actually noticed that. I'm like, Oh shit. Even and you know it's funny because again, like I work for the state, so even when we had interviews, they'd be like right in the building, you know. So I'd have my, you know, my black slacks on, my button up, under that button up. As soon as that interview's over, I'm going in the elevator, going downstairs to my cubicle, I'm buttoning that shirt. There's a horror shirt right under there. Like I can't wait to get this bullshit off. And if nice. it was professional, if it wasn't frowned upon, I would have button my button up shirts would be horror related. If they were okay with that for interviews, but unfortunately they're not. You gotta be professional. And I, I guess I get it, sort of, kind of, a little bit, but you know. Because I'm gonna be wearing. Because I look at it like this. I work in the office already. I'm gonna be wearing this shirt either way. It's not. And like what I do is not with the public. It's behind the scenes, so to speak. So hey, let me wear my horror shirt. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm chilling. Absolutely, no. I absolutely get that. But hey, brother, I'm gonna have to get moving. So I actually have a photo shoot tonight with the star of the yeah. movie. It's Jackie. Um, who is on Great American Morning. You might see her from time to time. And I got to get those promos in. So I'm going to send those photos to you ASAP so you can see them too. Awesome, man. Please, please do. Um, and if there's anything you want to plug really quick, feel free. It doesn't even have to be your horror. It can be your, all that. Go ahead and plug it. Yeah, guys, check us out every morning, Great American Morning, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Um, if you'd like to, uh, be sure to check out the, uh, the fundraiser page. That would be a huge help, guys. Um, really, and really appreciate uh, being on today. Oh, hell yeah. We got to do this again, too, man. We will be doing oh, 100%. 100%. And yeah, send me, send me the link for your, um, your, your American Morning yeah. show, and I'll post when this episode comes out, which I'm going to get out as soon as I can. I'll put it in the description down below and all that good stuff, but thank you again for coming on, man. Everybody go check them out. Go check out the fundraiser. Go back that. And as always, I'll see you in your nightmare.
Hey, people, if you're still sitting here, that means you watched this entire video. So thank you for that. Seriously, thank you for that. But can I ask you guys a favor real quick? Just a couple favors. Can you like this video? Can you share this video? Hit that subscribe button. Drop some comments. And that thing that goes bing, notified. Can you hit that bell as well? I'd greatly appreciate that. Thank you again. I'll see.